So you have an idea for some analysis or seen some data you wanna be able to get from a website. But this is where web scraping can come in handy and you can do this all within R. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So let's jump over to my R studio. So all the links for all the websites I'm gonna be going through and the scripts are gonna be in the description below. So if you want to follow along, you can just use the URLs, but if you wanna just run the scripts, they're there as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just show you how to get data from this particular page on IMDB, which is looking at TV series that are action ones, and it's sorted by the number of votes in descending. So if we scroll down, we can see we have around 50 different TV shows, and then they go on to a next page and the next page. And one little tool you will need just to make your life a lot easier is if you get yourself a CSS selector, which is basically something that will look at a section of a website and be able to give you what that actual HTML coding is to be able to drill down into. And then you can store that within a data frame in R. Now you can actually do this by going into a website, right click and do inspect and go through the sections here, but you have to drill down, find the different sections, and it's very cumbersome. In this case, I'm using Selector Gadget, which I've got installed on my Chrome. If I select this, I can hover over and see all the different sections. So if we got here, if we wanted to get the title, it highlights it green, but then you can see all this yellow around here as well. And the reason why it's done that is because it's thinking, oh, do you need everything that's here? But we don't. So all you do is there's anything you don't need, you can just click on it. So if we say we click on a star here, it will then turn it red. And you notice a lot of the yellow goes away, but then the yellow left are showing you the titles. So you know if you use this particular section down here, that will grab the title information. So that's just the starting point of what you need to be able to get the information. Now, how you do this in R, all you need to do is install two packages, one called Rvest, which is the one that's gonna be doing your main scraping, and then Tidyverse as well, because that will help with cleaning up some of the data and some general piping. Now, if you just install those two packages, I've already done it, so I'm just gonna load them in via the libraries. And if I just run that, we can now get down to the nitty gritty of actually pulling our URL. Now, this URL is the same one that I've got in the link below, but it's also the same one that we just looked at just a moment ago. And what I'm gonna do is just run that because all all I'm doing is saving that URL to that variable so then it's stored. So if we look here, we can see it's saved as URL. So now anytime we need to reference this particular URL, it's stored just as URL and we don't have to keep typing in the HTTP full length URL. Now, what we need to do is come down to the converting of the URL into a readable format in HTML. And that's where we do read underscore HTML and then in brackets, whatever you save that URL to, in this case, call it URL, we just put in there and then you just save it as another variable. In this case, all I've done is call it web page. And then if we just run that, we now have that stored and it says it's got two lists and it's just storing information to do with the HTML of the web page. So now we have those. What we can do is start collecting the different bits of information we want from the web page. Now, if you remember back, if we go to the website down here, when I clicked on title, it gave you dot lister hyphen item lister header space A. And if we go back to our R studio, you'll see I have that saved here. And all this is doing is it's looking at the node. So this is where we got HTML underscore nodes. And then we are pointing this to the read underscore HTML converted URL link, which we stored in web page, which we put here. All we need to do is just type in that HTML underscore node and then point it to what web page we want. In this case, it's what we got saved as web page. And then we do a comma. And that's where in quotation marks, we put that selector that we had down here. And then we do close bracket. And then what we want to do is just pipe in HTML underscore text with two brackets open and closed. And the reason being is that will then convert the HTML coding because that will come through in just HTML code 
this will just reduce it down to the actual text. So then it will just show what the actual title is of that particular TV show. And then the great thing is, once you've got that bit done, all you have to do is just point it and then just name it to whatever variable you want to. In this case, we're just gonna call it titles. We can now do the same for years. And the good thing about years is that generally they are sitting because it's in the header part, you can probably just pick up the name. So in this case, if you just copy this over, you can then just change where it says header A and just put in year and see if that works. If not, you can do the selector. But the one difference I've done here at the end, you'll notice is that I've piped in str underscore replace all underscore all even. And then within square brackets in quotation marks, you've got the slashes and then you've got the brackets. Now, what this is doing is when the data comes through, if you go back to the website, you will see there's brackets on either side of the actual dates. I don't want those. So that's all I'm doing there is just cleaning up the data before it comes in. And you can do that. You don't have to do it at the end. You can actually clean it up while you're putting it in. And that's how you do it. So if we go back, we can see we now have that and then I'm replacing it with blank. So those will come through without the brackets on both sides. Now, if we come down, you can start adding different ones. So here I've pulled in genre, rating, description, votes. So if we have a look at an interesting one here, let's say with description, and you can see it says dot rating hyphen bar plus then dot text hyphen muted. Now, the reason for the pluses is when it's sometimes sitting in a parent node, sometimes how it's stored, it will then have to pull through the parent for the child part, which you're coming here, to be able to know where it sits because there'll be other things called dot text hyphen muted and it just needs to know where it needs to come in. So if we go back and click on description there, we can see text muted is there, but it's pulling up everything else. So if we click out that and then click out that, we can now see it's now removed it. So generally when you see the plus sign, the plus sign doesn't mean include as such, it removes the parent and then leaves you with that part there. Because like I say, there are other areas that do have dot text hyphen muted. That's why you just need to be careful when you're working with it is just to double check you are using the correct one. And sometimes you need to find out where how it's nested when it's come from a parent to give you to the point of what you actually need, which is counted as the child. So now we have that section, we can then go back and we can see how that's put in. And then all you're doing is converting to text. So really, all I've done here is I want the titles, the years, the genre, the rating, the description and the number of votes for the top 50 voted TV shows under action. So all you would have to do is just run all that information like this and then it stores it all in here. Now you'll notice under here it's put its character and it says 1 to 50 and we know it's 1 to 50 because we have 50 different TV shows. So what we can do is just double check the length by adding length and then putting in the different names and then we can check that they all count as 50. So we know they're all 50, they're all gonna match up when we actually put them into a data frame. So now this is what we wanna do here. All we do is then combine all that different bit of scrape data into an order of how we want it and the table. And if you want to rename them, so all I've done is create a data frame and then I'm pointing that, just calling it data. And then all I'm doing is just renaming where I've got titles and I'm gonna call it title, years, I'm now called year, and then genre, rating, description, votes, keeping the same name, but just added it there anyway. So you can play around and do it yourself. And then all you do is just run that. That now creates your table. And if we view that table, we will have all the information for the titles, the year without the brackets, the genre, the rating, the description and votes. And just to prove that point, let's have a look at Last of Us, which is 12 and it's showing that it's still running. Action Adventure 8.8 .8, and it's got just over 400,000 votes. So if we go back to our website, scroll down and we can see Last of Us 8.8, .8, just over 400,000 votes. And we have all that information pulled in. But you have that, but you want to get the next page. So if we click next, we can now see the next page. And technically, if you just wanted to just get this page, you could just copy that, replace it in the URL that was done before and rerun the whole code and you get it. But why would you want to do that when you could actually just loop requests and then grab as many as you want of the pages and then append them onto one table. And how you do that is with a for loop. And a for loop 
It's very straightforward if you know how the URL is moving to the next page. And what I mean by that is if you notice, if we go back, this additional section popped up. So if I go back, you'll notice it doesn't exist. But then we suddenly have start 51. We go to the next page, it jumps by 50 and goes start 101. So what we want to be able to do is change on the URL what that number is. And if we do start one, that gives us the front. So we know we've got the first page if we do start one. And then we want to do start 51 for the next page. And if you want to get page three, that would be start equals 101. And that is done simply by creating a sequence within a for loop. The first thing you want to do is install your packages as before, if you haven't done them already. And then you want to create a data frame instead of before when we run it, it just stored it at the end. We want to have a blank one there ready. So when the loop passes through, it's always sticking under the bottom of the data frame. So what we want to do is just simply just go data.frame and then create a blank one because we don't want anything in it. So it's just two brackets open and closed. And then we're going to call this one data loop because the other one we call data. So we just got something different. And if we run that, you have basically a blank data frame. And all it's doing is it's going to save once it goes through the loop, it's going to do where we've done all the different titles and saving all the information data frame. We're going to save that into its own separate one called page underscore data and then we're going to bind underscore rows back into our data frame. So each time it runs through, it goes, oh, here's the first 50. Oh, here's the second 50. Here's the third 50. And just keep adding it within the loop. And then we'll give you your final output. Now, the great thing is you can do this if you know the numbering by just doing a sequence. So all you would have to do is create your for, which is going to be your for loop. Whatever you want to call your for loop. In this case, I'm just going to call it I. And then we're going to say, what do we want the for loop in. So we want it to be in a sequence. And the sequence is basically going, I want to know from number one, I want to go all the way up to 101, but by 50. So it would go 1, 51, 101. And it's only going to do it three times because you've got it there. But you could add in a lot more if you wanted. You could do thousands, anything like that. Just be wary that you don't want to overload the system. But there is a little trick that I'll show you in a sec, which will help kind of slow down what you're taking. So it has a little pause that enables so you don't end up overloading anywhere where you're actually scraping. And also you just need to be very careful how much you scrape, where you scrape and how often you do it. So it's always good to understand the policies of the website because you don't want to get yourself into trouble. So then once you've done your sequence, all you have to do is do close bracket and then you have this type of bracket. I forget what the name of it is now. Squiggly bracket. And then that is your starting point of your loop. So even though you've got your loop here, if we do this, you see it disappears because everything is all stored within here. So this will run page one first and go all the way through and then it will then store it and then it will come back and then it do 51 and then 101. And the difference between what the data you have before to what you have now is where the URL is slightly different. So instead of you having your full URL just stored as one, you want to join in the information. So in this case, we want to use paste zero. That will create a text URL that will have no spaces, no gaps, and will work perfectly for this example. And then where that start equals was, because you remember it had the one and it had the 51 and the 101, that's where we are put in between two commas, our variable name for our for loop. So whatever you called that, this is where it sits. And then you got the rest of the actual URL sitting in there now. And then all you do is then do read underscore HTML just as before. And then you can just put in your code as before to get all the different bits of information. This time, just remember to change it to whatever name you got here. So instead of calling it web page, I've got web page loop. And then, as I said, what this does, this then saves it into another data frame called page underscore data. And then that will then bind under each one. So we will have 150 rows of data instead of just the 50 as before. And then, as I said, I put in this little pause that just makes it pause under each loop 
for a few seconds so it doesn't overload the website while I'm scraping. And then all I'm gonna do is just run all this and then view the final output. So you come all the way up to your for loop, all that information, run it, and then we just wait. And then we have all that information all the way up to 150. So I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please give a like and subscribe. And if you want to carry on your analytical journey, check out these videos over here. And as always, until next time.